Do you write a weekly CSA newsletter? And if you do, do you love doing it? Is it your favorite thing in the world? Or do you dread writing it? Does it feel like it takes you forever? In today's episode, I'm going to share with you five time-saving hacks that are going to help you figure out how to write that important document so much faster, so much easier. Let's get started. Hey there, this is Corinna Bench, and welcome to the My Digital Farmer podcast. In today's market, it's not enough to just grow your product. You've got to know how to sell it, too. Welcome to the My Digital Farmer podcast, where we reveal online marketing strategies and tips to help farmers like you get better and more confident at marketing. Learn how to find more customers, increase your sales, and build a strong brand for your farm. Let's start the show. Well, welcome to episode 171 of the My Digital Farmer podcast. I am your host, Corinna Bench, one of the farmers at Shared Legacy Farms CSA out in Elmore, Ohio. I'm also the founder of MyDigitalFarmer.com, which is all about trying to help other farmers become more confident in their marketing and sales strategy so that you can grow a profitable business. How's everyone doing today? Welcome back to the show. A big shout out to my regular listeners. It is seriously hot out over here in Toledo. We are recording this um, in the middle of July and I'm getting ready to go on a vacation in approximately five days. That's right. My husband and I are leaving the farm for an entire five days, the end of July, and we're heading to Oshkosh, Wisconsin. We're going to be going to the Aviation Expo Conference Convention, whatever you call it, Aviation Show. This is a really big deal. I guess it's the biggest one in the nation, maybe even in the world. And we've been promising our boys that we would take them at some point. So we found a way to make it work. We're um, leaving our farm in the capable hands of our crew. We paused our CSA for a week. And yeah, we're going to see how it goes. I'll report back and let you know if everything fell apart or not. But we're super excited to get away. Um, A big shout out to all of my regular fans. Welcome back to the show. If you are new to the podcast, Super glad that you're here today. Make sure that you subscribe and go check out my first 10 episodes if you want kind of a 101 marketing fundamentals class um, to help you get started in your business. Well, before I get started today, let me give a shout out to this episode's sponsor, Local Line. I am a huge fan. Um, if you don't know who they are, Local Line is the operating system for the family farm. In addition to hosting your online store, you can use Local Line to get organized for inventory management, deliveries, and even online payments. Local Line's comprehensive list of features is going to help you increase your sales, streamline your processes, and it's going to save you time. It's trusted by over 11,000 farmers and producers. Local Line offers farmers the ability to own their own sales channels and reach their customers in a whole new way. And Local Line is now available in the United States, Canada, Australia, New Zealand, the UK, and Ireland. Try Local Line today for free and get a premium feature using my coupon code, Digital Farmer 2022. Terms and conditions apply. For more information, go check out the link in my show notes. And now back to the show. Well, before I get started with my teaching session today on the podcast, I wanted to do a quick plug for something fun that's going to be starting in a few days. On August 8th through the 13th, I am running a live five-day Instagram Reels challenge. And if you want to join me and learn how to do Instagram Reels and play in the Instagram Reels sandbox for five days, you can go and subscribe at mydigitalfarmer.com forward slash reels. This is free. And the reason behind this challenge is I thought I would create a fun way for us all to get out of our box 
and try to learn a new skill. Now, if you're like me, Reels was incredibly scary a few months ago. I had been putting it off. I didn't want to try and figure it out. And then I finally said, you know what? Let me just do this. Let me go and figure out the mechanics of how this works and just play around with it and realize that I might not be super awesome at it at first, but that's kind of necessary if you want to learn how to do something. And so that's what I did. I started following people that I admired and I literally started watching tutorials to figure this stuff out. And although I am certainly not an expert at it yet, I feel like I know enough to be able to guide those of you who want to learn how to even just make a reel. How do you put it together? What are the mechanics? How do you add audio? How do you add text? How do you delete them? How do you save the drafts? How do you decide what should go in a reel? All of that stuff, I walk you through step by step in this challenge. So if you want to subscribe, go to mydigitalfarmer.com forward slash reels. It starts live on August 8th. That means that if you're subscribed, your first email will come to you on the 8th with your instructions. And there will be a short like under five minute video to watch. It's going to teach you one little skill. And then you have a homework challenge for that day to actually practice the thing I teach you and create a reel with that particular feature in it, okay? It's designed to be very step-by-step. Each day builds on the next day, and after five days, you're gonna know enough about how to do reels to, yeah, feel kind of confident in it and know how to get better on your own. So if you're interested in playing in the sandbox, and this kind of sounds fun, and you're willing to look a little silly at first and just figure it out, then I want you to try it out. Go to mydigitalfarmer.com forward slash reels to sign up and look for your first email coming out on August 8th. All right, let's jump into today's topic. I am going to be sharing with you some of my time-saving tricks for writing my weekly CSA newsletter. I have long wanted to spend an entire episode walking you through my process for how I write this weekly newsletter for my CSA members. Now, if you're not a CSA farmer, this still might be applicable to you because maybe you send out a weekly email newsletter to all of your um, people on your email list. And I think some of the tips that I'm going to share in here may still apply. So don't just turn this off because you're thinking, oh, I'm not a CSA farmer. Um, But I often get this question, like, how do you write your newsletters? How long does it take for you to write your newsletter? What are you putting in there? This is an especially common question from new CSA farmers who know they need to do this, but they're not sure what should go in there or how to get started. So today is meant to be kind of a deep dive into my process, which has evolved over time. I remember in the early years when I had to do this every week, I really dreaded it because it was such a time suck and I didn't know what to talk about. And I spent so much time like trying to format the layout inside of Publisher and make it look like a newspaper. And oh my gosh, that was, I felt like I was back in yearbook class. And so um, now, many years later, I have changed my processes, I have streamlined it, I've figured out some hacks that save time that make this process a whole lot easier. Yes, it still takes me about three hours a week to put this together, but it's so much better than what it used to be because it used to take me literally like half the day, if not more. So I want to walk you through what I do and maybe you'll be able to take away one time-saving hack from this list of things that I'm going to share. Now, before I get started, I want to make sure that I distinguish between the weekly CSA newsletter and the weekly email, because they are, in my mind, slightly different things. So this is a little bit of nomenclature, um, and some of you may disagree with how I look at this, but when I talk about my weekly CSA newsletter, I'm not talking about the weekly email. Okay, those are two separate things. Every week I send out a weekly email to everyone who's on my email list that is not a CSA member. And usually inside of that email, which I send through ConvertKit, um, I'll have either a tip or some kind of a story or a parable or an inspirational message. And sometimes it's an overtly promotional email because I have a special going on and I wanna drive them to my online store. Okay, that's for people who aren't in my CSA. Now, I also write my CSA newsletter, 
And this is actually written inside of WordPress on my website as a blog post. I sit down on Saturday mornings. I spend about three to four hours every morning putting this together. And it really feels kind of like a newspaper. Um, It has different sections. They always are in the same order. The first section is um, what's going to be in the box and then storage tips for how to store those things that are going to be in their box. The next section is usually some kind of information article about how farms work and so forth. I'll walk you through what those are in a minute. Okay. So there's a predictable pattern as people open these up from week to week. If they actually read them every week, they're going to notice that it always flows in a certain format. And so they can kind of go hunting for the section of the newsletter that they find the most interesting. Now, I do write a weekly email to my CSA members in ConvertKit. And in that weekly email, I link to the blog post where I have written all the stuff. And so the stuff that's in the email itself is like, the high level um, highlights and bullet points and it kind of teases what's going to be in the blog post so they they really have to just click on the link so that they can go read the entire true newsletter which lives on my blog post and i have about a 70 to 90 percent open rate for this weekly newsletter so i think it's because i spend some time on it and it's well done and they actually find it really helpful Okay, so I just want to make sure that you're clear that I have two different processes. Yes, I do write a weekly email to everyone who's on my email list that isn't in my CSA. It's important that I stay in touch with them. That's kind of a different piece of content. And then I have this blog post like newsletter where I'm putting all this information I'm about to share with you um, into that. And that's what I'm linking uh, to in my weekly email to my CSA members. Okay, so how do I actually tackle this blog post slash newsletter every week? What do I decide to put in there? How has that morphed over time? And before I get started, I want to make sure that you know about an episode that I did way back long ago when I first started this podcast. It's episode 11. And um, I interviewed Lauren Rudersdorf, who's my uh, co-instructor of CSA Quick Start, which is an online course that teaches Uh, new CSA farmers how to start a successful CSA and she and I talk about how to build a killer CSA newsletter so if you're looking for some step-by-step guidance there and like a general framework I really recommend that it's a very popular um, episode in my archives so go check that out Um, I think you can find that at mydigitalfarmer.com forward slash 11 one one okay so I have five kind of time-saving tricks and hacks that I want to cover in today's episode. And um, these tips are things that um, have just really helped me figure out how to do this quickly. And you're not going to be able to implement all of these right away, but I want to share them with you because I think when you hear them, you're going to go, oh my gosh, that is such a good idea. I can start doing that now. And then a year from now, you're going to look back and you're going to have these resources that are going to make things so much easier. You'll understand as I explain how this works, okay? So the first thing I wanted to share with you is that when I sit down in front of my computer and I start writing this newsletter, I use a template. (laughs) Um, I actually open up two tabs. I will open up a tab that is last week's newsletter, so I'll grab that. And I'll have another tab that is last year's newsletter, okay? So if it's week five of the CSA, I will take a look at what what did I say in week four? I'll have that open. And then I will go back and find what did I talk about in week five of the year before? And I will copy, literally copy and paste the, um, the blog post from the week prior and just put it into my editor. And I'll start with that. And that way, all the formatting is in place and I know what the sections are and now I'm just replacing the content from there. Okay, so what are some of the things that have ended up being in my CSA blog post slash newsletter? Um, Well, let me walk you through. I've had lots of different iterations over the years, um, but these are the ones that I've kind of landed on. I've learned that I can't make it too long because then people 
kind of stop reading the whole thing. So I've, I've landed kind of in this nice little perfect formula for me. The very first section is usually a picture of the box contents and then it's what's going to be in the box. So I literally list each vegetable one by one and it's the storage chip tips. So it'll be, you know, zucchini. And then after that, it'll say to store. And I talk, talk through exactly how to store it. How do you prepare it? Um, do you have to peel it? Do you have to wash it, etc. cetera? Um, and then usually like how to freeze it and some suggestions even for how to use it. What are some of the common uses for that vegetable? So I will do that section first and that's usually pretty long. And for people who are seasoned veterans, they may kind of scroll through that section if they feel pretty confident and they know how to actually store it. But for newbies, that's the most important thing that they're trying to learn their first year. And so that's why I have it first because that's what they're trying to find. It's the most important stuff. And I don't want to make them hunt for it by hiding it down at the bottom of this blog post. Okay. So it's storage tips and what's in the box. The next section after that, so I'll talk about and here's what's in the fruit share, here's what's in the coffee share and so forth. After that is the announcements. I have a section that's just farm announcements. And this is where I might talk about, you know, I've got a farm event coming up or I'm running a special challenge or contest right now here's details on how you can participate or maybe i have here's what's for sale in the online store this week right these things tend to shift from week to week and again because i've copied and pasted it from the week before um, sometimes if i have like a contest going for multiple weeks it's super easy because it's it still applies and i don't have to retype it all out and i can just continue to use that um, so that's kind of the second section the third section is what I call Farmer Kurt's field notes. And this one I think is probably the most read section of my newsletter. Um, and Kurt will sit down and write this out. Sometimes it takes a lot for me to get him to come in here and actually do it. And then I'll doctor it up. So I have learned how to speak in his voice, but I have him kind of start it out and give me a sense of what has been going on on the farm. Tell me about, you know, has it been raining? Um, is it been raining too much? What were you weeding? Were you um, putting up irrigation? What, what were you working on this week? How are the crops doing, right? Like he's talking about that kind of stuff. And um, if we have any kind of personal life stuff that's going on, um, he might mention that as well because we think it's important to, to share what's going on in our life. Now, this is the section that I also litter a bunch of pictures into because I think that um, I want to make sure it's not just giant blocks of text, text, but that we're telling the story visually as well. And so I'm looking around and trying to find, you know, what's going on on the farm this week visually, and I can kind of put them in between these sections. The section after that is what I call the news article, and this one changes from week to week. Sometimes this is a um, an article about how to actually use the food. So, for example, last week I put something in about how you can freeze cucumbers. And it was a teaching article about what that looked like. I linked up a YouTube video inside of there as well to show them actually the demo and how to do it. I had the recipe. Um, yeah, so sometimes it's how to actually use the produce. But oftentimes it's some kind of educational piece like how do organic farmers spray and what does, what does that look like for an organic farmer? And it's an educational article meant to teach them something about farm life. And that one is usually takes me a while to write. If it's brand new material, I'll talk more about a hack for that in a second. But um, I get a lot of good feedback about that as well. And then finally, at the end, I have the recipes. So they're just a list of the recipes. Um, and I actually have a link to a PDF guide where the recipes actually live. So I just, I'll print out in the blog post, it'll just be a listing of the names of the recipes, but then they have to click on the link to actually get the PDF that has the actual recipe in it. Um, I used to, to hide the PDF guide behind kind of a paid wall, like you couldn't get access to it unless you were a member. And now I've just become like, you know, whatever. It's people, anybody can technically go to my blog post every week, scroll down to the bottom and click on the PDF recipe link and, you know, all 12, 15 pages of the recipes will appear. And I just feel like, you know what, that's fine. If, if people, you know, anybody can, can access this now. Okay. So that's kind of like 
the format of my newsletter. Those are the topics. I used to have things like an interview with a CSA member, or I used to do like a Facebook group roundup section where I would pull the best of the best ideas that were in our Facebook group, and I'd put them in there and give props to the different people. I have since dropped those elements because the, the newsletter was just getting really long, and I was trying to also save time from you know having to write it as well. So this is kind of where I'm at, and you get to decide what you want to put in here. And I think episode 11 that I referenced earlier gives you some suggestions for the kinds of things that you could put into your newsletter if you're looking for other types of categories. Now, if you want to go see an example of my CSA newsletter, you can go to my blog. It's really easy. Just go to sharedlegacyfarms.com forward slash blog. <laughs> And you will see the latest one. You can kind of click below those and read all of them from this past season if you'd like. Um, and that'll just give you a, a sense of what visually it looks like. And you'll see what the format is. And you'll notice that it is kind of repetitive. Okay, so that's tip number one is to start with a template. My second tip is to use past content and repurpose it. Don't be afraid to rewrite an article that you wrote two or three years ago about something on the farm because people are not going to remember that you wrote it. So number one, I have created a master document called the A to Z Vegetable Storage Guide. And it lists every single vegetable that we grow. It has a picture of it and it talks about how to store it, how to prep it, how to use it, how to freeze it. And I've talked about this before many times on the podcast because it is an amazing resource. I actually now sell it to farmers as a Canva template so that you can grab it. It's like 45 pages, I think. Every vegetable and fruit under the sun that we have at our farm and then some. And um, it's designed to be a resource for farmers so that you can turn it into a lead magnet and give it to your CSA members, or it could just be a gift or a bonus you give them if they sign up early. Um, or it's something that you can use to help you write your newsletters, to use it the way I'm describing right now. So I will open up that storage guide. And let's say I've got, you know, seven or eight things that are going in the box that week. I'll have each of those vegetables listed in the blog post ready to go. Let's say it's zucchini, tomatoes, corn. Um, and then I'll go into my A to Z storage guide and I will literally just copy and paste whatever is in that entry for that vegetable and put it into my blog post. And that section of my newsletter gets done in about five minutes, even if I have, you know, 10 entries or 10 different vegetables because I have a master doc somewhere else where all of that has already been uh, pre-written. And so this is one of the time-saving hacks that I love. If you have some kind of a, a document like this, it's going to help you a ton in this section of your newsletter. And this is an important section to have because your new members especially don't know how to store their food. And this is actually one of the primary things they need to learn first, in my opinion, as a new CSA member. This is the skill that I'm trying to get them to master, to understand the importance of storing your vegetables properly and extending the life as long as possible. And that all starts with proper storage. So your new members are looking for this. And that's why it's listed first at the top um, of the section. Let's not uh, make this hard on ourselves every single week, having to sit down and be like, oh, how do I store zucchini? And what do I want to tell them about sweet corn? Like if it's already pre-written, you don't have to think about it and it becomes mindless. So I love that. Now, I also, um, under this kind of hack of using past content and repurposing it, um, I will take a look at that open tab that I talked about earlier of last year's version of the week five CSA newsletter. And I will take a quick scan of that blog post and remind myself, what, what did I do last year at this time? And sometimes I'll see, oh, we did that contest. That's right. We did a car sign contest at the beginning of the year. I got to make sure that we do that again. That was really fun, right? Or, oh yeah, I started selling field to table dinner tickets that week. I, I probably should, you know, come up with a, a workflow for that and get that in the hopper for next week, right? So when you have that tab open that reminds you of what you did last year, it sort of um, shows you what you should even be putting on your radar and it gives you ideas for what to include in the newsletter. Again, that's using past content to help you remember what you even should be talking about. 
Um, the third thing that helps me with this section is I have created a Google Doc of all of my past newsletter articles, all right? I want you to just think about that right now because that should just blow your mind right there. If you could start that practice right now, um, a year from now, you're going to have a really awesome resource going for you. Now, I've been doing this for 14 years. And for 18 weeks every year, for 14 years, I have been writing some kind of an educational article about the farm. Um, whether it's a article about the potato beetle or an article about how we do irrigation or an article about that whiteboard I was talking about earlier or tomato overload, what to do with tomato overload. Um, I remember I went through, I wrote an ebook for every single vegetable that we grew and I included it with my newsletters um, for a couple of years there when we were first doing that. Like I have so much content and I started putting all of that stuff into this Google Doc. Anytime I would write a new article, after I published it, I would copy and paste that section and then I would just go add it into this master doc, master Google Doc of the newsletter articles section. And then I have a table of contents sitting at the top to help me even remember what are the different articles that are in here. Okay, so if I'm hunting, if, if I'm sitting there thinking, okay, oh my God, I got to write an, I have to write an article. I don't know what to talk about. What should my topic be? And if there isn't something top of mind or that's obvious for me, I can go back into this old Google Doc, look at the table of contents of past articles I have written before and see if something pops out at me. And I promise you, like I probably have about 80 articles in there now and I never ever have to stress about what can I write about because there's always something in there that was good before and I'm like oh I'm just going to pull that out again let me write that article about the um the braconid wasp and how we use that to fight tomato hornworm that'll be really cool they'll like that and I'll just recycle it okay so if the well runs dry this kind of a hack is super super helpful now I will say that when I first got this idea to create this master google doc um, maybe like four years ago, it took me several hours to go back into all of my past newsletters because I had kept them all and find the articles that I had written, copy and paste them and put them in there. But once I did it, uh, it was so awesome and it has saved me so much time and so much hassle. And I don't stress out about writing the newsletter because it's this creative writing process that sometimes makes me panic when I'm rushed or I just don't feel like writing. I'm like, oh, I don't, I don't want to write this right now. I don't even know what to talk about. Having this Google Doc is so incredibly awesome because it helps me just break that decision paralysis. Okay, so I encourage you, if you've already been writing stuff in the past, take the time um, to go back and copy and paste it all into a Google Doc. Make a little table of contents so that you can see at a scan what's in there. And use that for the future. And don't feel afraid to um, go back and, and repurpose an old article that you wrote a couple of years ago um, about a certain topic. There are new people in your, in your news cycle or new people in your list all the time who don't know that stuff and they need to be exposed to it. And frankly, you've got people that have been in your CSA for a while that maybe probably didn't read that article the first time you wrote it. So if it shows up again... Uh, they're not going to sit there and go, oh my gosh, they write the same five articles every year. Like no one's doing that. Okay. Just let you, let that go. Let that go. So this is a really awesome hack that I'm so glad I started doing and I encourage you to do it too. Today's episode is sponsored by my awesome resource called the CSA Membership Academy. Have you heard me talk about this yet? This is your ready to go content source that helps farmers help your CSA members thrive. Visit mydigitalfarmer.com forward slash academy to get started and you can get your first month for only a dollar when you use my coupon code TRIAL, T-R-I-A-L. When you join the CSA Membership Academy, you'll gain access to six modules of my CSA Farms curated selection of CSA member support resources. I've created how-to cheat sheets and guides for my CSA members to help them learn how to cook. I've got the What to Teach Your CSA Rookies mini course. There are cooking templates and infographics for all of the basic meal formulas that you can share with your members. There are video cooking tutorials, 
ready for you to use and implement whenever you need them as long as your subscription is active. Each resource or lesson contains either a PDF guide or an infographic or a cheat sheet or a recipe collection. And as a member of the Academy, you can use those. You can download them and use them as a jumping off point to make your own educational content that helps your CSA members get the most out of their season. How do you get started? Head to mydigitalfarmer.com forward slash academy and you can get your first month for only a dollar when you use the coupon code TRIAL. Join the Academy, browse all the modules, see what jumps out at you, and then build your content plan and watch your CSA members come alive this year. Even if you just pick out three to five different resources that you're going to be committed to sharing with them, that can go a long way for helping them feel cared for and supported, and you'll see your retention numbers rise. Head to mydigitalfarmer.com forward slash academy to give it a try. You can get that first month for only a dollar when you use my coupon code TRIAL. And now back to the show. Okay, so that was the second tip, just to use past content and repurpose it. The third tip is somewhat related, but I, I gave it its own category because it has been a game changer for me. Um, The third tip is to create a Google Sheet of all of your digital content and all of your links to your digital content. So this is sort of my, um, I call this my content creation log. It is a Google Sheet, is my table uh, table of contents of absolutely everything I have ever made digitally for my CSA members or frankly even for people who follow my farm. So when I create a PDF, like the formula for a perfect pesto on Canva, or there was a time there when I made a, I made a veggie ebook for every vegetable we grew. I think there's like 45 of them. I made that um, on, on Microsoft Word, I think, and I turned them into PDFs, okay? I take those PDFs and I put them into the media as a media file on my WordPress site. So they live in the media library in there. And they have a digital signature, right? They literally have an HTTPS colon slash slash sharedlegacyfarms.com forward slash blah, blah, and has a file name. Um, when I create a video on Facebook as a Facebook Live or a quick tutorial on how to, how to use arugula, okay? I, I went through that phase two years ago where I tried to do a quick short teaching tutorial on almost every vegetable or the different exit strategies. Like all of those videos eventually got uploaded into YouTube or onto Vimeo. And they also have a URL link attached to them. They have a digital signature. Um, if I write a blog post about a specific thing, if, I, if, if that's all the blog post is about is 10 ways to use tomatoes when you're overloaded, okay? That blog post link um, is out there. If uh, I have key website pages like how the CSA sampler works, or my pickup site locations, right, have their very own page. I know where where all of those pages are, and I put them into this massive content creation log, the Google Sheet. And they're organized kind of by category, so I have a section for all of my recipes, my CSA recipes each week of the year are in there. I have a link, all the links for my actual newsletter blog posts for each season are in there. I have a whole section for the ebook guides. I have a section for all the PDF guides. I have a section for um, the exit strategy teaching sessions, and then other just interesting things about the farm. If I'm showing a farm process and I put that on YouTube, like it's all in there, okay? Now, how do I use this? Like, why is this helpful? Well, first of all, it reminds you of what you even have. So if you're a person like me that's a content creator and you love to just showcase and document what you're doing or you're trying to be helpful in your creating these resources, very quickly you can lose track of all the stuff that you've made if you're not writing it down somewhere. And then you might just use it once and you, and you never use it again because you can't find the link or it takes too long to find it. I used to have people say to me, oh, Corinne, I remember that You showed us how to make pesto once, but I can't find the video in the Facebook group. Can you find it for me? And I would, you know, have to take 10 minutes to go find the video. 
and then send it to them in an email. I started getting those kinds of requests so often that I was like, oh my gosh, this is a time suck. I need to start creating a place where I just put everything so it's really easy to find it, right? So I can do a search in the Google Sheet, find it, boom, send it off. And that's kind of what was spurring, what spurred this decision to create this table of contents. Um, and I, I reuse this all the time. I, when, when people ask me questions like that, I can quickly go find, a, go find the resource and help them out. Um, or like I said, if I'm sitting down to write this weekly newsletter blog post, and I'm like, you know what? I want to show a video for how to freeze cucumbers. I don't want to just write an article about it with a picture. Like, I actually want to show the demo. And I know that I did a demo a long time ago. Let me go find that YouTube video and embed it in the blog post. And I can do that because it's really easy to find the video in this master table of contents, content creation log, OK? So, uh, plus, it also just gives you ideas. Again, if you're not sure what to even talk about, you can go back and look at that table of contents and see, oh my gosh, I have this idea and I have this resource and this resource and I haven't shared that resource in like three years. I totally forgot that I made that. Oh, I didn't even know I did that video about XYZ in the field. That would be really interesting, right? You just, you immediately get ideas and it unlocks you. So this is um, a section or, or a tip that I really want you to take to heart. If you are someone that is creating content on a regular basis, can it be repurposed? Can you download that Facebook Live that you did and put it onto YouTube, grab the link, and then just stick it in this Google Sheet so that you can repurpose it later? I, I used to have a section in my uh, newsletter called From the Archives. Uh, sometimes I do a From the Archives post in my Facebook group for my CSA members. And I'm able to link up one of these resources from that master doc um, into that Facebook group or into the newsletter blog post that I'm writing, okay? And it also gives you some SEO juice too. If you're putting it onto your website's blog, uh, blog and you're pointing to a resource that you've made before, um, that's always a good thing for your search engine optimization. Okay, so that was tip number three. Time-saving tip number four when it comes to writing a newsletter quickly is to create folders for your photos. Now, photos should be an integral part of your weekly newsletter blog post, in my opinion, because nobody wants to read giant blocks of text. Um, their eyes will roll back into their head. So we wanna break up the text with photos. And I know like life gets a little crazy and we're not always taking pictures of what's going on that week on the farm. Maybe you, you just released your summer squash into the world, but you just didn't take any pictures of it this year yet. Well, you know what? If you've got folders of uh, different photos organized on your phone or on your, uh, in my case, I use Dropbox or in Google Photos, it's real easy to go and find a picture of summer squash that you took a few years ago if you have a workflow in place where you, you know, you're taking pictures and you're sorting them and storing them in these folders. So um, I have created different folders with different topics. So I have one called planting, I have one called uh, box photos, I have one called customer meals where I'll put pictures that have been shared with me by my own customers of the things they're making with the box or screenshots of stuff from the Facebook group. I have a folder called vegetables and then a subfolder inside of that for each, each vegetable has its own folder. So if I'm looking for pictures of onions, I can go into the onions folder and find it. And there's, you know, tons of pictures of onions there to choose from. Um, I have another one called farm dinner. You get the idea. So it kind of depends on what kinds of stuff you're taking a picture of, uh, but try to take some time to organize this. Now, I'll be honest, like my workflow for this is a little bit messy. Um, I'm usually just taking photographs throughout the season and maybe periodically, like four times a year, I will sit down and go through the stuff on my phone and I will save the best of the best and put it into folders. Because at this point, I have quite a few photos 
in those folders because I've been doing this for a long time. And I kind of don't need to be adding a whole bunch more. So um, if there's a really terrific picture that I want to save, like it's going in the folder. But otherwise, like I feel like I can kind of use stuff from the past or I might delete some of the ones from long ago that really aren't as good as the stuff that I'm taking with my really awesome camera now, right? So we just kind of want to be curating what's in those folders. But I only do that a few times a year and whatever I don't end up saving, like I have to make decisions like I'm not keeping this picture forever and it'll get deleted uh, and, and taken off my phone. So that is definitely a part of my process, but it's not something that I do every single week. But I have found like when I need to find a picture to insert into the newsletter, I often am not using the picture from that week, I'm going into my archives on my Dropbox and I'm finding a photo from before and just putting it in there. So that's super helpful. All right, my final tip um, for ways that you can save time when you're writing your newsletter is to ask the question, can you outsource something from your newsletter to someone else? So I don't write the recipes for my CSA box every week. I used to do that my first five, six years. It was me trying to find recipes. Um, eventually, I had a CSA member reach out to me and offer to do that for me in exchange for a share. And I said, yes, her name was Christine. She did an awesome job. She's actually the one who suggested that we start a Facebook group back when Facebook groups were just getting started. And then she um, decided to move on to other things. I think she did that for me for a couple years. And luckily I found someone to take her place. Her name is Katie and I've talked about her before and I'm gonna have her on the podcast soon. I'm gonna be interviewing her. I'm super excited about that. So you can meet her and kind of pick her brain for how she does what she does for me. But she is my CSA coach and her job is not only to write the newsletter uh, recipes for me each week, but she's also in charge of managing the energy and the flow of content in the Facebook group. And um, every week she's responsible for doing some kind of teaching content uh, or a tip. Uh, she does the Facebook video unboxing every Tuesday night for our, for our members. But as far as the newsletter goes, um, I will expect her to submit the recipes to me by Saturday night. Like I need to have them in my possession by Saturday. And then I just upload that as a PDF into um, the actual blog post. So I don't have to do that section. That used to be a big time suck, but I found somebody who was better at it than me, who was really excited about it. And now that is her contribution and it has been huge. So maybe there's something that you can give away in your process of writing the newsletter. Maybe you can give the whole thing away to someone else. That would be sweet. Um, although I do think there should be a little bit of your voice in your blog post, in your newsletter. That's my opinion. Um, but if you have someone that can do this for you, don't be afraid to outsource it because it can save a ton of time. Okay, so let's review what are my five time-saving hacks for writing your CSA newsletter in record time. The first one is to start with a template. Do not reinvent the wheel. Uh, number two is to use past content as a resource and repurpose it. Literally cut and paste it and tweak it. Number three is to keep track of all the new stuff that you create and put it into a master Google sheet so that you have that one source of truth. Anything with the digital signature lives there so it's easy to find and it'll make your content creation so much faster. You won't have to think of topics because you can just go back and see what did I do in the past. Number four is to sort and organize your photos that are evergreen photos, things that can be repurposed again and again. And number five is to outsource parts of your newsletter if you can. So what do you think of that list? Did something jump out at you? You guys, when I first started writing CSA newsletters, I would literally sit down in front of my computer and I would start from scratch every single time. And over the years, I realized I do not need to do that. I can use templates. I can create these master docs that have copied and pasted things from the past. I can reuse material. I can find time-saving hacks like photo folders to repurpose things. Do not feel like you have to create new stuff every single week. Now, when I sit down to get started with writing the newsletter, I find sometimes that 
I do what's called buffering. Like I will come up with excuses for why I won't get started yet. I feel like I need to wash the dishes right now or um, man, I should check my email before I get started. Do you do that too? Um, I'm doing whatever I can to put off, procrastinate the process of starting the newsletter because it can still feel overwhelming. And here's kind of a little tip that I have learned that helps me. Um, I tell myself, Corinna, just do the vegetable storage part. Just get started and do the first section where you go and copy and paste the how to store every vegetable from your A to Z vegetable storage guide. Just do that. And if I can convince myself to just start that, then what always happens is I get momentum going and I realize, oh my gosh, I got that done in five minutes. I'm already like 25% of the way through my newsletter. And usually that's all it takes is just for me to get the ball rolling. And then I move on to the next section. I'm like, oh, the announcements, copy and pasting it. There's really not a whole lot of new stuff I need to say. Oh, just one more thing. And, you know, I type that out in three minutes and boom, that section's done. And all of a sudden I feel like I'm making progress. So that's what I just encourage you to do if you find yourself procrastinating on this. Just commit to getting started and do the easy thing first to build some momentum. So I always start out with the box contents and the announcements because that seems to just fly out really fast. Um, The part that takes the longest for me is writing out, um, correcting, and adding to the field notes from my husband because that's the real kind of creative process. And then finding the pictures to go along with it. That seems to be the part that eats up the most time for me. But linking up the recipes from Katie, like that's really fast, right? So I find the things that are quick and then I save the hard thing for the end. Well, I hope that this has been a helpful episode for you. You can kind of see behind the scenes how I go about doing this. The process for me of writing this kind of a blog post is usually about three to four hours, no more than four hours. And it's because I have all of these templates and time-saving hacks that help me do this. So I hope that you learned something today. I hope you can take one idea and maybe start implementing it um, so that you too no longer dread the process of writing your weekly newsletter. It can actually go really fast and not take a whole lot of mental energy if you've got these templates and these tools in place. Well, today's show notes can be found at mydigitalfarmer.com forward slash 171. And if you like today's episode, Would you please go leave me a rating or a review for the podcast? I'm trying to get a few new ones every single week. Or go tell someone who needs to hear about today's message about the podcast. If you know a farmer that's trying to learn how to do CSA newsletters, this might be just the thing. Now, if you want to get on my email list and you're not on it yet, I have a fantastic onboarding sequence for those of you who subscribe. It's going to drop a weekly email out to you for about three months, and it's literally going to walk you through the minefield of Marketing 101 for farmers. If you have no idea what you should even be learning, this is a newly recreated onboarding sequence that's going to guide you through that maze, and it's going to spell out, hey, these are the things you need to learn first. Here are some tips I want to share with you. Here's some resources and gifts I want to give you. So if you want to get on that, um, it's the fastest way to kind of learn the ropes of marketing. Go to mydigitalfarmer.com forward slash subscribe. Pretty easy. Now, don't forget, I am now on Instagram at mydigitalfarmer. I would love it if you would sign up for my Instagram Reels Challenge. It begins on August 8th, runs through the 13th. You can go to mydigitalfarmer.com forward slash reels to sign up. Thanks so much for joining me today, guys. Have an awesome, awesome week. I'll talk to you next time. Bye-bye.